my name's Mark, I represent the captain with the Royal Engineers with number five Beach Group. Um, the display that you see in front of you today is a re representation of the weapons that you'd find on D-Day in June 1944. On your right hand side is the German section and from the Panzerfaust to the end of the table is what predominantly the Royal Engineers will be dealing with and will be using. In the centre here though is a Piat a projector infantry anti-tank which is the major or primary weapon that the British use as an anti-tank weapon during World War II for the latter stages of World War II. The Germans had Panzerfaust which was a rocket launcher, the British had Piat which was a bomb launcher or a spigot mortar. The difference being this wasn't a rocket, this was a bomb. See, you said the word Bob, that was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon just keep going on this tick. Shall we? Where did I get yeah. to? You're explaining it was, it was a bomb rather than a rocket. Right. It, it was a bomb rather than a rocket projectile, which meant that it could be used in confined spaces and inside buildings, whereas a Panzerfaust, because of the back blast, could it use it inside the building or you'd get a suntan. The actual weapon, the PR, was designed by Stuart Blacker. He was a colonel uh, that designed the Blacker Bombard prior to this. and uh, That was used by the New Zealanders in North Africa with uh, limited success. But the design of the spigot mortar was a sound design and decided to be used for various items. Mostly the PR. Uh, the spigot mortar, which was uh, the petard on the AVRE, the Avri, Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers, and the Hedgehog, which was a naval use of the weapon for anti-submarine warfare. The pit itself is basically a tube with a large spring and a, a rod called a spigot that went through the back of the actual bomb. The bomb itself is a shaped charge, a hollow tube with a propellant charge at the neck of where the propellant tube is at the bottom of the bomb. This was loaded into the pier down the spigot tube. When the sear was released, the rod went up through the bomb, hit the propellant charge, the propellant charge came out the front of the Piat and the rod went back into the weapon to recock the weapon. Uh, because every action is an equal and opposite reaction, the, the force of the charge going that way meant that the recoil from the charge forced the spigot back in to recock the Piat for a second shot. If that didn't happen, the pier had to be cocked by hand by twisting the base plate of the pier itself and then by pulling up on the handle and with your feet either side of the, the base there and re the huge spring that was inside the tube and it engaged the sear and then you were ready to load another bomb pull the trigger and it release the sear and set the next bomb. Same principle, all it is is a large spigot that launched the bomb from the launcher. The bombs were slow in flight so you could actually see where they were going. The, then when they were unpackaged, the bomb came like this with its propellant based on the fins and the, warhead, and the shape charge warhead at the front. All of the same principle as a shape charge on the Piat rounds was the same principle as on the Panzerfaust and the number 68 rifle grenade. All the same principle, all a shaped charge. This preceded the Piat, was launched from a cup discharger on a number four, uh, the Lee Enfield SMLE with a, a cup discharger attached to the end of the rifle and propelled by a blank ballistite cartridge which acted on the base plate of the actual grenade launched the grenade out of a short cup discharger 
The pit itself wasn't just used as an anti-tank weapon, it was used as a mortar as well because of the cost of the basis of it, it was basically a mortar in a tube. It had a, a sighting line across the top of the tube where you could pick up the, the actual weapon and sight it where you wanted it to go. And by changing the angle of the actual pier, you could uh, change the trajectory, trajectory of the mortar around and use it as an indirect weapon, firing it on over buildings, onto the roofs of emplacements, and it had a secondary use. They were also mounted in banks on the back of universal carriers, uh, and again, like an, an indirect role, it was a bank of maybe six or seven of these we used, and they were all initiated to fire a salvo of the same type of bomb as this one as an indirect support weapon. Um, the sighting of the weapon is, is just a simple flip up foresight and a graduated rear sight with a spirit bubble. The, the graduated sight allowed you to aim the weapon for firing indirectly as we just described as a mortar. Uh, the white the white round that you see in front of you is an pr actual practice round. It's the same weight as an actual pier bomb, but no fins and it's just a heavy yeah. cast iron front. If you unscrew the, the front of the bomblet, you can see there's an actual charge that goes in, a small charge that goes inside the, the hollow tube. Same principle as firing a, an actual live round. Fired from the tube with a, with a small adapter that fitted inside the tray at the front. These were retrievable and reusable, that's why they were painted white. Uh, that's it for the PR. Right, thank you very much. That, act that actually went.